So without further ado, kadto kita sa aton po ano? Kadto kita sa aton uh, text uh, for this morning uh, which can be found in John chapter 3, no? Which is a very popular passage uh, actually. Nang, uh, many of you are very familiar with this passage, but just let me put it on the screen so so that uh, you, you will have an easier time of uh, following it. No? Ang aton message is entitled, Seeing and Entering the Kingdom of God. Karon ko na lang i-explain kung uh, nagkagtul kita di sa John chapter 3 when in fact ang aton ginatunan first Thessalonians. But in the meantime, basahon tanay ang passage. No? The Bible says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you Oh, what's this? How can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So let us pray first. Let's ask for God's blessing. Lord, we just praise you for your steadfast love. Thank you, O Lord, for preserving our lives. Thank you for your faithfulness. We feed upon your faithfulness every morning. All that we are, all that we have comes from you. Thank you so much for your goodness, faithfulness, grace, mercy. May our lives really be full of praise and adoration towards you, O Lord. Even as we study your word, even as we worship together. Thank you for my brothers and sisters, your children who are uh, gathered uh, via Zoom right now and who unite in one spirit and with one mind are focusing their hearts and minds upon you. We pray, O oh Lord, that indeed our study will be glorifying and pleasing to you. Enlighten us, O oh Lord. We would like to receive, O oh Lord, spiritual strength and nourishment from your word today so that our lives can be changed, transformed, and so that our lives will become pleasing to you, O Lord. That is the full purpose of our existence, the primary reason why you have saved us so that we might glorify you, O Lord. That is what we want to do today. So cleanse us, forgive us, O Lord, so that there will be no hindrance that uh, might uh, impede, O Lord, our understanding and the benefit that we want to receive from you. Lord, please work in our needs. Once again, we acknowledge we are dependent upon you. Be enthroned, be glorified, be exalted in our midst. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay, so let's proceed to study this uh, passage. It's a very long passage, and uh, I'll try to shorten it as much as I can. Pero siguro ang una nga pamangkot nga dapat ko sabton kung ano ang connection sini sa aton ginatunan sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. So let's go there anay. 
hindi ko na lang ni pagbasahon, I'll just uh, put it on the screen. If you remember, ang atong ginatunan about the second coming is the need to protect ourselves from the coming wrath. That is why we need to put on the helmet of salvation, which means we really need to be assured about the certainty of our salvation. Otherwise, we will grow uh, weary and discouraged and we will not uh, persevere in the Christian life. And in order to help us do that, in order to confirm and strengthen our assurance of salvation, si, si Paul, he, <laughs> he presented a very deep doctrine. Kagdiri, you have really to understand something about the mind of Paul. Nga ang application niya is really rooted on doctrine. That is why hindi siya kapalayo sa, sa doktrina. And these are really very deep doctrines. The doctrine of election and the doctrine of atonement. Nga natunan to na na. So I will not uh, dwell there uh, 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 at length. No? Okay, t- natun- natunan na 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 ton. Pero ultimately, ang aton security, ang aton bala as- uh, certainty of salvation, ultimately, it depends on God. God's grace. It is because God has appointed us to obtain salvation, which, you know, cannot be cannot be thwarted kay God ya ang nagdesisyon sino makontra siya and Christ died for us he made actual payment for our sins so much so uh, inevitably gin gamit ko ginang word inevitably uh, those whom God has chosen and for whom Christ has atoned they will in the final analysis be saved and cannot be anything else but saved Pero gini explicar ko man nga, you know, uh, ining mga dalom ni nga kamatuuran, they are paradoxical. Kay it does not mean nga just because God is sovereign, uh, we are therefore deprived of human responsibility. Hindi lang kita kabalo kung paano i-reconcile ang uh, sovereignty sa ginoo kag ang responsibility sa tao, but uh, the responsibility of human beings is still there. And uh, gini explicar na to nga, uh, if uh, even though God has appointed, even though Christ has atoned, it does not work automatically, a person needs to believe. Otherwise, uh, well, he, he, he cannot be saved. But then, gin na point out kita sa problem. If you remember, no, gin, gin point out ko na actually left to ourselves because we are dead in sins, we are sinful, our hearts are desperately wicked, hambal ni Jeremiah, and beyond cure. Actually, we cannot savingly believe. We can intellectually believe, la in na iya, but we cannot savingly believe because the natural man cannot receive the things of God and cannot understand them because they are foolishness to him. So, hindi automatic nga ang appointment sa ginoo kag mga atonement ni Christ will become effective in our lives. Something has got to be done about our corruption and inability to believe kag dira masulod ang Holy Spirit. Okay, base maglawid ko dey introduction pa lang ni na explicar ko na, na sa last Sunday. So subong ya, this is the reason nga makadto kita sa John chapter 3 because the Holy Spirit is the missing link. It is the Holy Spirit who enables us to believe. Kag ina ang process, ang proseso whereby the Holy Spirit creates faith, saving faith in our hearts is known as regeneration or the new birth. Okay? So that's the reason nga atong anta ang John chapter uh, 3. Uh, but there's another reason actually. Uh, na-realize ko, I do not know whether you will agree with me, nga many of us really do not understand what the new birth means. Abi naton ang new birth uh, is dependent on our power as if kita ang nagahat ang nagabun ang sa atong kagalingod which actually is an oxymoron di bala nang ami kumpamin sa ron mugit how does a person how can a person give birth to himself uh, birth is something which is outside our control and power i mean why why ka pagin bata te syempre you cannot give birth to yourself no but uh, ang kalabanan hindi lang ko maglawig di uh, you know, have that idea that when it comes to spiritual rebirth, it is something that is within our power and control, and uh, that is not what John 3 is teaching. Kung basahon mo gidni sang 
maayo. Okay? One last thing, bago ko kay ti, last to na ning uh, sermon, pasensyahan niyo ko kung ah, hindi hindi last ha, last sa series. Pasensyahan niyo ko kung uh, medyo maglawig-lawig do. No? Kundi ang balko da. Therefore encourage, ah, hambal galit ni isang Bible. Therefore encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing, no? Uh, I have to say something about this because as I said, uh, I have to do justice to God's word. It's very interesting nga ang encouragement, ang Christian nga encouragement is connected to what is known as edification, building one another up. So, encouragement without edification is incomplete. No? So, anong boots lingon sa edification or building one another up? Magbasa, kasi ang New Testament especially, it's really connected to teaching. Amuna nga maintindihan mo na subong si Paul kung nga uh, nag-spend time git siya yakag effort na tuduan ang mga tao sa doktrina because ultimately kung wala doctrine there will be no significant uh, or worthy nga application ang aton para sa no ang aton certainty ang aton peace of heart regarding our salvation ultimately rooted in doctrine kung wala kung wala ang ini nga kamaturan nga ang ang Ginoo bali nag-appoint si Christ nag atone effectively Uh, maguba ang aton assurance ang reason gali nga strong ang aton assurance because of doctrine no which uh, leads me to something no nga i i have to say this it, it's in my heart no okay ini siya nga problem struggle ni para sa akin eh kay of course i understand that we want something that is immediately applica- applicable no we want something uh, immediately bala makitan mo ang bunga sa imo sa, sa imo kabuhi you, you want something uh, ang benefit bala makitan mo dayon i understand that pero let me tell you a story may isa gid ko ka regret sa akong kabuhi nang uh, <laughs> may isa ko ka regret i share ko sa inyo a long time ago bata pa ko Uh, ang daddy ko, because he comes from a musical family, uh, ginpa-enroll niya ko sa isa ka piano teacher. <laughs> piano teacher ko, strict pa! Gapang, gapang ampak, kamot! Dason, hindi ko kayong chindis ang uh, music theory. Kagkwan ang kakapoy. Ka, I was a very impatient child. I think I had the uh, ADD. Wala, galing kaya at that time, di ba? Hindi pa man na na... na natunan eh. but, but I was a hyperactive uh, person uh, hi, uh, and uh, child wala ko patience so I found it boring ang lain pagid kay I had a natural talent uh, this is not to boost I had a natural talent of playing by ear so pamatian ko lang ma- matukar ko siya no so wala na ako nagtuon theory so bong uh, 56 na ko it's it's uh, you know realistically it's too late for me Kadamo sa mga music nga nanumian ko gid especially classical nga gusto ko tukaron hindi ko matukar kay wala ko foundation because I neglected the time and effort to do the boring task of studying music theory kanugon pero ti nagkal ti move forward na lang ta tapos na to pero the point is in the christian life it's like that you know Uh, kadamo sa mga riches bala of God's word na hindi mo ma-appreciar if you will not take the time to really study doctrine and that's why nga even though sometimes nga even though sometimes people find it difficult people find it uh, hard uh, I understand pero kenang lanon kun ihimuon because it's really very important and you will understand that when we come to the end of the the message, how important doctrine really is. You know, ang valuable sa word of God, sometimes it's not in the immediate application. It's in the ever increasing appreciation no, for the beauty of the Lord. And that is an appreciation which will last forever. Kung pa minsan, I mean, hindi eh, ko nalang ipagpadaluman, but, but to think about it, yeah, yes, application is important and it's good. But someday, when we reach heaven, the major activity there will simply be contemplating the holiness of God. Grabe, no? So, contemplation is not less than application. But let, let's go for, let's, let's move on. Instead, may isa ko oras, mga duhan ni Karol ko oras. Okay.
For we know, brothers, loved by God, that He has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. The role of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Introduction proper. But sa lingon, hindi pag ito yung introduction kagina. Amuling matutuod ng introduction. Pero lipotong talang niya. The necessity of being born again. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, come from God. No one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Okay? Diyutay lang ano yung background, kaya you have to know this, no? Diyutay nga information. Okay. Nicodemus, he was a Pharisee. Istrikta ni siyang sekta sa mga Fudeo. He was a ruler of the Jews. Both slingon, member siya sa Sanhedrin. Kung sa ato ni subong panahon ang equivalent niya ni senator because ang Sanhedrin was the highest legislative and judicial body of the Jews among that time. This man came to Jesus by night. Wala gin explicar ni diyan kung uh, uh, night time gid nag uh, kadto si uh, Nicodemus. But uh, I, I found this interpretation very interesting. That's why I would like to share it with you. Sa book of John bala, kung basahon mo ang Gospel of John, ang contrast between light and darkness is very important uh, for him. In fact, kung basahon mo later on, dira sa John chapter 3, ang kasanag, the light uh, came into this world, but the people did not rec- receive the light because they love darkness more than light. But whoever comes to the light, hambal de, uh, hambal dira, uh, ginapakita niya nga he loves what is true and God is working in his life, no? So, so it might be nga gin, gin mention gin ni, ni John nga Nicodemus went uh, by night in order to, you know, uh, uh, in order to explain to us nga bisan, bisan pa nga Nicodemus is someone who belonged to the darkness nagpalapit siya to the light, to Jesus Christ, because of the work of the Holy Spirit. That is the only reason which uh, suffices to explain na someone like him. Kaya kalabanan to nga Pharisees, ang balgan ni Jesus, woe unto you Pharisees, pero si Nicodemus niya, naglain, naglain. He belonged to the night, but he came to the light, and the reason for that is because of the Holy Spirit. So that might, you know, John might be giving a hint about that. Okay, Rabbi, nga agin tawag, you know, again, this is interesting. Nga agin tawag ni Nicodemus, si Jesus nga Rabbi, kay kung paminsaron mo, si Jesus was not formally trained. Hindi siya ya formally trained in uh, in uh, theology. But in spite of that, dako nga, dako ang respetar ni Nicodemus para sa kay Jesus. And the reason for that is this, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. Nicodemus recognized that Jesus Christ was from God because of the miracles he performed. Okay? Kaga, again, this is interesting. Kay kung basahon mong Bible, damo man ibang gahimo miracles. Pero ang mga false prophets siya, ang mga miracles nga ginahimo nila are lying wonders. Tricks. Magician's tricks lang. Ang kay Jesus siya, his miracles were the real thing. So, na-realize, gidya ni Nicodemus, lain niya, lain niya si Jesus. He is the genuine article. Ang miracles niya, real niya. I am resisting the temptation to comment about, you know, the miracles of many pe- many uh, people nowadays. Pero sige na lang, hindi na lang kaya mag-commentar parte sila. Jesus answered, at kagari na, Jesus answered him, truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The rest of our message will focus on this. A number of things to notice. Number one, nga ang nagdiretsyo si, si Jesus, I mean, do wala na wala preliminary greetings, wala niya naging sabat ang greetings ni, kwan, ni Nicodemus, dumiretsyo na lang siya sa, kwan, sa, sa nabalaan niya nga hunger ni Nicodemus. You know, in chapter 2, the last verse of chapter 2 says, Jesus, many believed in Jesus because of uh, the miracles that he performed, okay? But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew what was in the heart of man. Kag, dira makitaan mo nga si Jesus, he's omniscient. He knows what is in the heart of man. 
So wala pa ka pamangkot si Nicodemus, kabalo na si Jesus kung ano gidiyang tuyo ni Nicodemus. Nicodemus had a spiritual hunger which he hoped Jesus could satisfy. Nicodemus wanted to know how to see and enter the kingdom of God. That is why, diretsuan ay na. Wala na preliminaries. Right away, Jesus said, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I want you to notice something about this statement. Because it does not only talk about the necessity of being born again, huh? You have to be born again. Otherwise, you cannot see the kingdom of God. That is the force of the word, unless. But there's another thing which many people miss. Kagdiri, this is where I want to try, where, where I am try, uh, where I attempt to correct a common misunderstanding. Una ang born again. Have you noticed? Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But it seems, correct me if I'm wrong, that many of us reverse the sequence. We put the cart before the horse. Instead of being born again first in order to see, ang ato niya baliskad. We see first before we are born again. <laughs> so, I leave it up to you to realize that. no? But in the meantime, We proceed. This, this is what we are going to examine this morning. The meaning of being born again, the means to being born again, the manner of being born again. Let us proceed. What does it mean to be born again? Pero hintagaan ko na kamo hint actually. Ang kalabanan, ang ila paminsaro na muni. That being born again is something we ourselves do. We give ourselves birth. Nagambal na ko nga, oxymoron na. But anyway, here's what the Bible says. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? It seems nga si Nicodemus, bisan pa nga teacher of the laws siya, bisan pa nga uh, formally trained siya, na miss niya ang point ni Jesus. And I'd like to explain to you why he missed the point. Because kagina, kung di nabasa na tontong hambal ni Jesus, unless a man be born again, is born again, he cannot, end, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay. Ang Greek word for the term born again is actually susceptible of a double meaning. In other words, it can also be translated born from above. Okay? So, ang natabo, what Jesus actually meant by the same word was Unless a man is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of uh, God. Pero si 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 Nicodemus ya, he understood it literally. Kagang iya ya pagkinsinde, unless a man or a person is born again physically, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The, of course, that cannot happen. No? Of course. Uh, when you are old, you cannot be born again in that sense. Pero, amo na ang reason, no? Nga na-misunderstand ni Nicodemus ang meaning ni Jesus because the Greek word, the word Jesus used was actually susceptible of two meanings. It can mean born again. It can also mean born from above. What Jesus meant was born from above. So, get explain na ni Jesus. What do we mean by born from above or born again? Kay, by the way, even though laining ang mga meanings, at the end of the day, they amount to the same thing. Kay, a person who is born from above is also born again. Okay, anyway. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. I just want you to notice beforehand, na ang seeing the kingdom of God is and entering the kingdom of God, in effect, are synonymous. Kahit ti, kagina, hambal niya, unless you're born again, you cannot see. Subong niya, you cannot enter. So, anong conclusion mo? It means that the two things, although lain-lain ang emphasis nila, amount to the same thing. Ang seeing the kingdom of God means you realize, you understand, you recognize and perceive, Ini naman yung enter, you partake, and you participate. But anyway, the result is the same. If you truly see, understand, believe, under, uh, uh, perceive the kingdom of God, 
of course, you will enter, participate, and partake of the kingdom of God. But my focus will be on the highlighted words, born of water and the spirit. And here is where it becomes controversial. Na posta na for effect, kay controversial ni. Because, ang phrase na born of water has been interpreted by many people in many different ways. Ang balsang iban, ang born of water means baptism. Hindi ko na lang na pagpadaluman, I reject that interpretation and my and my reason for doing that will become clear as we go along. Pero hindi ko na lang pagpadaluman na. Ang iba naman niya gahambal, ang pastor ko, sang una, when I was growing up, ang iya explanation na muni. Kung ang isa ka no ka tao ibunag if when a person is uh, uh, you know is born uh, I do not know if this is true or not no may water ka no gagwa from the woman as I said I do not know whether this is true no pero ti amo na yung interpretation niya uh, kag kag sang bata ko amo nang pagkaintindi ko sang meaning sang born of water kay ti amo na gin tudlo sa ako eh. but anyway ang iba naman yang hambal nila Uh, we are born of water kay tungod nga sang si Jesus kanogin lansang to sa cross he was pierced and water and blood came from him so sa tud lang i do not understand nga uh, anyway ang uh, so uh, na sari-sari nga mga interpreta- interpretation and others interpret this and i think this might, this might be a better interpretation even though i also reject it Uh, ang bal naman niya sang iban, ang born of water refers to the washing of the word. So, ang water ka, no, refers to the word of God. Which somewhat makes sense, no? Kay actually, the Holy Spirit, when He works, usually, He works in conjunction with God's word. Nga samtang gapamati ka sa pulong sang ginoo, and uh, samtang gabasa ka sang Bible, ang Holy Spirit ga enlighten sa imo, kaga convict, sang imo tagipusuan. So, you know, it's a, it's a good interpretation. But I will also have to reject that interpretation because, are, pamati ang tanilihod. Nicodemus was a teacher of the law. He was familiar with the Old Testament. So, when Jesus mentioned about water and the Spirit, Jesus was actually alluding to something which Nicodemus was familiar with. In other words, mag-interpret ka sa born of water and spirit, i-consider mo kung ano ang audience. Who was the person Jesus was talking to? Jesus was mentioning something which Nicodemus was supposed to be familiar with as a teacher of the law. And that is why I think, I believe, the best interpretation of born of water and the spirit is what we find in Ezekiel 36, 25-27, which is known as the New Covenant. Basahon ko lang kadali, ha? I will sprinkle clean water on you, water, and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart, a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh, and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. In other words, I will cut to the chase. Para sa akon, ang born of water and born of the spirit, they amount to the same thing. Water ang symbol, the spirit is the fulfillment of that symbol. But the water also refers to the spirit. Galing kay, ang water emphasizes the purifying, cleansing, refreshing, renewing work of the Holy Spirit. But only one thing is being spoken of. It is simply the Holy Spirit. To say that one is born of water and the Spirit is equivalent to saying you are born of the Spirit. And the Spirit, when He works, He purifies you, He takes away the heart of stone, He cleanses your corrupt affections. He gives you a new heart. That is what it means. If you will remember, na ang intention ni Jesus is to evoke, you know, in the mind of uh, Nicodemus, something he was familiar with. So, bisan magkagto ka sa Isaiah 44, 3 to 5. 
For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. They shall spring up among the grass like willows by flowing streams. This one will say, I am the Lord's. Another will call on the name of Jacob and another will write on, the, on his hand, the Lord's, and name himself by the name of Israel. So the Lord will pour water on the thirsty land and the spirit and the result is they will be born again. They will have new life. They will be renewed. They will spring up. See? So it is one and the same spirit which is being referred to when Jesus used the metaphor or figure of speech, born of water. Galing kay, by means of the, uh, by, use, by using the word water, Jesus Christ was emphasizing the purifying activity of the Holy Spirit. So that's what I believe is the best interpretation of the phrase, born of water and the Spirit. So we're through. With point number one, being born again refers to the divine covenant, the new covenant. Let us proceed. The means to being born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The agent of being born again is the Holy Spirit or the divine comforter. Okay, we already know that. So let us proceed. Okay? Now notice, nagambal siya, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Do not marvel. Hindi ka na matingala kung akin ang lanon magkit born of the spirit. Because the flesh, human beings, can only produce human beings. They cannot produce spiritual beings. And please notice, sinful human beings can only produce sinful human beings with the exception of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. In the same way, it is only the Holy Spirit who can produce spiritual, holy beings. Na. So, ang conclusion ni Jesus, do not marvel. Di ka matingala. This is perfectly logical. Okay. He came to His own. His own people did not receive Him. But to all who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Okay. To shorten the time, I will just show you verses sa uh, ibang nga mga, what is this, uh, passages of scripture, pero hindi na lang ko mag-explain. Lantawa na lang ang mga highlighted portions. Nothing good dwells in my flesh. It depends not on human will or exertion. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. Actually, natunaan, tanan na sa una. Pero the point is the same. Kung kita lang, we cannot give birth to ourselves, of course. Of course, wala kita sang gahom nga mag-cause mag-trigger sa new birth. Okay? Because we are of the flesh. Ang new birth, ang spiritual rebirth, no? Has to be performed by the Holy Spirit. So, let's leave that. Let's go to the sec- uh, to the fact nga it is by the Spirit. Uh, but as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love Him. The things of salvation. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. We have received the Spirit which from God that we might understand the things freely given us by God. Sa simple nga sigula nun, wala Holy Spirit, hindi mo maintindihan. Ang gospel, ang kaluwasan, hindi mo maintindihan, hindi ka magpate, hindi ka magtuo, hindi mo gani maintindihan in the first place. Okay? Let's confirm this with other passages. Okay? Uh, okay. Sa punta, pagali ang other passages. But anyway, cut to kita sa last point. Dokodasig lang, no? Pero, sige lang. 
uh, answered prayer ni para sa akong kapangamuyo git ko permi ginuo to do imang ko abi magwan mag lipot sa mag palipot sa akong wali hopefully god will answer that prayer today even though he has not been answering it during the past as and it shall be given <laughs> o din ako okay the manner of being born again The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. John compares the event of being born again to the activity of the wind. The activity of the wind is unpredictable, uncontrollable, uncontrollable, inexplicable. The wind blows where it wishes. In the same way, that's how this whole... That's how the Holy Spirit works. Which means, being born again is a matter of divine choice. Balik git kita ya sa sovereignty, sang ginoo. And, and you know, ang, ang ako ng tanay pangamuyo para sa atong tanan, no? Nga, I, I, I really pray that we will learn to study the Word of God very carefully. Nga tagaan, tagit bala emphasis ang mga words nga ginabasa. Because you know, sometimes it's really right under our noses. Ara lang na siya. Galing kay well, hindi naton madakpan because naga, naga speed reading kita. But it's very clear, oh, the wind blows where it wishes. So last Sunday, gin-share ko sa inyo nga akong experience with Pastor Pete, no? Sa member pa ko sa Stillwater Band. Hindi ko na lang pag i- I story ali what I hope you remember that story but for me through experience na confirmed gidya na confirmed gidya para sa akon nga that the wind the spirit really blows where he wishes appointment is of god atonement is of god regeneration new birth application is of god the holy spirit it is a matter of divine choice no Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood does not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Ang background sini, hambal ni Juan, hambal ni Peter sa kay Jesus. You are the Christ. Ginklaro with yan ni Juan. Ginklaro yan ni Jesus. Eya. You did not know this on your own. It was revealed to you by my Father, therefore you are blessed. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. Okay, ano pa? At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Ang gospel niya, ang kaluwasan, ang new birth, hindi niya pa alam-alam. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Divine choice. Very frankly, my brothers and sisters, ako... I just go by God's word. I just go by God's word even when I do not understand. Summary. The meaning of being born again, it refers to the divine covenant. The means of being born again, it is the divine comforter. The manner of being born again, it is a matter of divine choice. Conclusion. What is the goal of being born again? Nga, anag, ano, what does the Holy Spirit intend? When He causes us to be born again, when He opens our heart, when He opens our eyes, what does the Holy Spirit intend to accomplish? The answer is in the last verses. As I said, I want to do justice to God's Word. So, that, allow me to read it. Bisan pang uh, malaba-laba. Nicodemus said to him, how can, this fi- how can these things be? Once again, hindi niya maintindihan. Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel? Yet you do not understand these things. As I said, hindi niya paalam-alam. Ang kaluwasan, hindi niya paalam-alam. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know, bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. In spite of his formal training, in spite of his being a teacher of the law of the Old Testament, he does not understand, he does not receive 
If I have told you earthly things you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Hindi mo gani maintindihan ining mga earthly illustrations party sa birth, kag sa wind. Paano mo maintindihan ang mga spiritual things? Gidyan? Which reminds me, di ba lang na nabasahan ta, the natural man does not receive the things of God because they are foolishness to him because they are spiritually discerned. Unless a man is born again, born of the Spirit, he cannot see. He cannot see the kingdom of God. No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And we go back to the very beginning nga ginhambal ko ang appointment sang Ginoo hindi automatic ang atonement ni Kristo hindi automatic kinanglan matuo kita sa iya so that we can receive the benefits of his death otherwise we will not be saved we will not have eternal life but praise the Lord the Holy Spirit because of God's grace and mercy work in our lives so that we are enabled to believe so that we may have eternal life and the plan of God is now fulfilled. The grace of God. And I come to our conclusion. Take home. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost But now I'm found. I was blind. But now I see because of the amazing grace of God. Let us pray. Lord, thank you, Gid Seymour Gracia. Thank you that you did everything what we could not do for our sins. You chose us. You loved us before the beginning of time. Christ paid the penalty which we could not pay. And the Holy Spirit melted our stubborn hearts and opened our blind eyes. Now we see. Now we see. And now we can enter the kingdom of God. All because of your amazing grace. And that is why my prayer for all of us is, Lord, may we grow and grow and grow and grow in appreciating more and more your grace. It is all of grace, O Lord. It is all of grace. If ever we are saved, it is because you have been gracious to us who are undeserving, unworthy sinners. Throughout eternity, O Lord, we will be forever praising your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' precious name, Amen.